So JavaScript is an object-oriented language and it's dynamically typed. So here we create variables using where keyword where and we just give a variable name. Okay. And now we are not defining any type for this variable. Okay. In JavaScript, we are not defining any type for the variable. And this variable will take the type based on the value that you assign to this variable. For example, if you are assigning A, B, C, so which is of type string, okay, then this variable will be of type of string. Okay. Similarly, if you are assigning the value A is equal to 1, 2, 3, then this variable is of type of number. Okay. So like this, the variables will be taking the types okay, uh, based on the value that you assign to the variable. So we call it as a scripting language. JavaScript is a scripting language. We don't call it as a programming language. So it is a client-side scripting language. We tell JavaScript is a client-side scripting language. See, why? Because whenever you write any JavaScript program, the JavaScript program will be running on the client machine. That means it will be running on the browser side. Okay. Rather than uh, the code getting executed on the server side, here we'll be executing on the browser itself. Okay. The client machine running the code locally rather than relying on the server to execute the code and return the result. Okay. So that is why we tell that JavaScript is a client-side scripting language. So there is no connection with the server. So it will not take any help of the server to execute the program. So whereas if you come to PHP and all, it is a server-side language. Okay. Because to execute the uh, PHP code, we'll be taking the help of the server. But here, we are not taking the help of a server to execute the program. That is why it's a client-side scripting language. So sometimes they may ask you in the exam, uh, most mostly most of the time during the uh, Viva, they may ask you what is the difference between a Java and a JavaScript. Okay, so to highlight, there are few points. So Java, it is a programming language, whereas JavaScript is a scripting language. It is a strongly typed language. That means we declare int, float, and all. But here, we don't declare any type, so it is called as a dynamically typed language. Okay. And types are known at the compile time. So when you write the program, you'll be clearly, you'll be declaring the type of the variable. But here, the types are known at the runtime. That means compile time type checking is impossible. Objects in Java are static. Okay, so that means if you declare a variable as int, then it will be of type int. But whereas the objects are dynamic, it can take of any type based on the value that you assign. Then the collection of data members and the methods is fixed at compile time. So for a object, okay, for an object, you will be declaring certain data members and methods. They will be fixed at the compile time. But whereas in the JavaScript, the number of data members and the methods of an object can change during the execution. And the last point is Java is an object-oriented language because it's a pure object-oriented concept. Everything will be in terms of objects. Okay, All object-oriented concepts are supported in Java. But in JavaScript, it is not a pure object-oriented language. We can call it as a object-based language. Yeah, JavaScript running code locally. That means it runs the code in the browser. Okay. To give some examples of uh, scripting language, okay, we have uh, Adobe Flash, VBScript. Okay. JavaScript. So these are some of the examples of a scripting language. So here you can tell, you can see the example of how the code, JavaScript code is downloaded and executed. Okay. So coming to the first point, we are requesting, okay, we are going to request a page. Okay. So the method get method, we are requesting 
application dot html page by entering in the uh, URL. Okay, you are requesting this page. So what happens is the requester will be sent to the server, and the server will search that application dot html page, and the request will be sent. Okay, to the browser. So response will be in the form of the page. You can see here. This is a page which will be sent by the server. So here you have the JavaScript code. So these are all JavaScript code which is embedded within script tag. So what the browser will do once it gets a code, it will execute. The browser will execute any Java JavaScript as required. Okay, so it will execute this code, and browser will then display the page to the user. So browser will alone will execute the page. Okay, it will not take the help of the server. So this is a neat diagram showing how the JavaScript is code is downloaded and executed. Okay. Now coming to what are the advantage of going for client side scripting language. So we have three advantage main three advantages. The first one is there is no load on the server. Okay. So since we are not taking the help of the server to execute the program, so there will not be any load on the server while executing the JavaScript code. Browser can respond more rapidly to the user events. Okay. If you are using JavaScript code, then you can reply. The browser can respond user events quickly. User events can be, for example, a mouse click. Okay. Person is clicking. Okay, so that is an event. Keyboard. Okay, we are giving an event. Keyboard down or keyboard up. So these are different events. Okay, so whenever he makes a, he uses any events. Okay, then the browser can respond more quickly. So for example, the person or the user is clicking on the button. Okay, so immediately the browser will give some response. Maybe in terms of opening a new page, opening a new window, or giving a pop-up message. So the response can be given neatly using JavaScript. Third one is can give developer more control over the look and the behavior of the web widgets. Okay. So you can view neatly arrangement or the look and feel wise of the websites can be improved by using JavaScript. For example. Uh, uh, let, let me take an example of a form. So when you are entering the form details, okay. Suppose in the place of uh, username, you are entering the number. Okay. So at that time, when you are entering the number, a pop-up message can be displayed. Okay. Uh, telling that please enter a valid username. Okay. So look and feel wise of the website can be improved by using a JavaScript. Okay. And similarly, you can do. A validation. The most important concept of uh, JavaScript is validation. Okay, validating the form. For example, validating the email address. Validating whether you have entered a 10-digit phone number. Okay. So for validation, we will be using JavaScript. And next, coming to the disadvantages. So there are main four disadvantages. First one is not all the browsers supports the script. Okay, so this you have to remember. Old browsers like IE browsers, Internet Explorer browser, sometimes may not support the JavaScript code. But nowadays, okay, nowadays the recent browser all they support the JavaScript code. But if you come to old browsers, they don't support some of the JavaScript code. Next one is different browsers or different versions of the browser suppose script differently. So this also you have to remember. So different browsers or versions, okay, they display, uh, they take the script code in a different way. So while you are uploading, okay, while you are uploading your website to the server, okay, you have to do testing. Okay, more quality assurance testing is required. So you have to test your website if you are if you are using JavaScript. You have to test your website thoroughly using different browsers and using different versions. Okay, so that it will not affect the end user. Okay, the end user can neatly 
get the website. So quality assurance testing is required. So more testing is required. Next one is more development time. So that is why, okay, when you are developing the uh, code also, it takes more developing time and effort might be required. If the code is already present, suppose if the script is already there, okay, if the script is not available, okay, if the script is not already available through other source, okay, sometimes you might have to, you might need to uh, create the script from the scratch, okay, at that time, you need more development time and effort, okay, when you are creating a new script, because one thing is you have to uh, check whether your script is working in different browsers and different versions. Next, code reusability issue. Okay. So, one code may not support in one browser, okay. and similar one one code may not support in other version of the browser. So, these things you have to take care. So, code readability issue. Okay, then uh, this browser may not be able to read the code. So let's look into some other examples of scripting language. So the first one is Adopt Flash. Okay. So most of you might have heard about this Adopt Flash. Okay. So when you are displaying the website, okay. if you, you might have seen our own college website, you will be getting a flash there. So, so Flash, it is a multimedia software platform. Okay, it is a flash, Adopt Flash. Okay. So to display this flash, uh, Adobe Flash, okay, you need Adobe Flash okay, in the browser. Uh, sometimes if you are not able to, uh, sometimes uh, it will not display the Adobe Flash properly because it will give a message like you don't have an Adobe plugin. Right? Sometimes you might have observed this. So it is a multimedia software platform. It is used for displaying animations, drawing internet applications, mobile games or applications, etc. So it is a web interface. Okay. So you can, this is one of the website which is, which is uh, where we have used, they have used Adobe Flash for creating the website. So the programming language, okay. So in Adobe Flash, the programming language used is called as action script. Okay. So here we are using a programming language called as action script. So here the most a uh, more important concept is flash object. Okay. So in our uh, flash we have a flash object. We are creating flash objects which will be having the extension dot SWF. It stands for shock wave flash. Okay. Similar uh, as you can include JavaScript in an uh, in HTML code. Same to that, you can embed Adobe Flash script okay, within an HTML document using the tag object. Okay. So for JavaScript, for embedding JavaScript, we are using script tag, correct? So we are placing the code inside script tag. Similarly, if you want to place Adobe Flash code, you have to use this tag that is object tag. Okay. So you can see here, this is a sample showing the flash object okay so this is a flash object so you can download from the internet okay there are freely available flash objects okay and you can include in a website okay. when you are designing the website you can include this so this is a flash object okay. so we have to use object tag and you have to give type is equal to application bar x minus shockwave hyphen flash Okay, data is equal to give the flash object name and you can specify the width and height okay, for displaying the flash. So similar to JavaScript, this flash file will be downloaded by the browser. Okay, so it will be in the server. Initially, your website will be hosted on the server. Okay, if you want to display the flash, when you execute the website, okay, when you run your website, this flash object should be downloaded from the uh, server by the browser and browser delegate the control to the plugin. Okay, you'll be having in the browser plugins 
to execute the flash objects. So you can see here. So this is almost similar to the uh, execution of the JavaScript code. So here the only difference is here in the code we have the flash flash objects. So, so this only difference we have. So first initially we are requesting a website web page from the server and that will be given to the browser. Okay. This is a page will be given to the browser. Next the browser will request the server to give this flash object which will be there in the server. Okay, so this is a flash object. And then server will give that flash object to the browser. Then browser will execute this flash object by taking the help of the plugin. Okay. So plugin will execute this XWF file and it will so you can, you can see this is a flash plugin you need for executing the uh, flash objects. Okay. The result will be then finally the result flash result will be displayed by the browser. The next one scripting language is Java applets. So you might have studied any Java about the Java applets. Okay. So this is one of the concepts that we can use while creating the websites. It's a small application that perform relatively small tasks. Okay. So this Java applets, applets are used for performing relatively small tasks. For example, for creating interactive buttons for creating a text which is scrolling, horizontal scrolling text or vertical scrolling text. This is Java applets are written in Java programming language. Okay. So this Java applets can be embedded within HTML document using this tag. Okay. So previous one flash was using object tag, but here we are using applet tag. So this is the applet tag we are using. You can see this is an example. Okay. So here this is a uh, applet okay. code. So code name is lake dot class. Okay. So Java applets will be having the extension dot class. Okay. The previous one was having the extension dot swf. Okay. But here Java applet will be having the extension dot class. Okay, so you have to remember the syntax. So the tag we are using as applet. Previous one was object. Okay. So try to execute this. Very okay. simple Java applets and try to execute this. Okay, you can see here this is similar to the previous one. Okay, we are requesting the page. The page will be given with the applet code. So this is applet code. You can see with the extension dot class. And after that, the server from the server we are getting this applet okay, ap dot class from the server. And then browser delegates handle of this applet to the plugin for executing. So you can see this is a plugin we use for executing Java plugin. Okay, so previous one was Adobe plugin. So here we use Java plugin. So then Java plug plugin passes the control to the JRE, that is Java Runtime Engine, for executing this uh, AP dot class. Okay, so Java Runtime Engine will execute this AP dot class. Uh, then it will should display the result in the browser. Okay, so this is the working of Java applet. Very simple. Okay, so we saw three diagrams. Very simple diagrams. Okay, how JavaScript code will be executed? Okay. How Adobe Flash code is executed? How Java applet code is executed? You may get in the exam with a neat diagram explain how JavaScript code is executed, or applet is executed, or Java uh, Adobe Flash is executed with a neat diagram. Next, coming to the history of JavaScript. Okay. So JavaScript was first introduced by a company called as Netscap. Okay. So Netscap is a company introduced JavaScript in the year 1996. Okay. And it was first originally called as LiveScript. The name of JavaScript was originally 
it was live script okay and then it, uh, then it got renamed to javascript so live script was uh, developed by netscap okay the version is 1.8.5 in 1998 the javascript was developed to handle only few functionalities initially when it was developed it could handle only few functionalities to name few it was supporting few graphics okay it was developed to display some pop up alert message so we saw this in the second program how we were displaying a uh, square root or cube of a number using alert okay or displaying some alert message next one it was used for displaying some scrolling text in the scroll bar or it, it uh, or we were using it for opening a uh, new browser window like a new tab we can tell or a new browser window for validating the user data that you enter in the online form in html form whatever the data that you enter that was validating that is this is a one of the important thing why the javascript was developed for validating the user data that you enter in the online form so this was a common use of javascript later in the mid of 2000 a new language called as uh, ajax so ajax stands for asynchronous javascript and xml extendable markup language was developed it is not a programming language okay so this is not a programming language so browser has a got a built in object called as xml http request so this is the built in object which is required while uh, dealing with ajax okay so this built in object is used for creating the ajax code to request the data from the web browser so so to request the data from the web browser we are using this built in object that is xml http request so more about this ajax we will be studying in module 5 okay so next is javascript so here in ajax we are using two concepts that is javascript and html dom concepts document object modeling concepts to display the data or use the data so these two were used in ajax okay so using ajax what we can do it was a develops dream okay so what was the dream first one is update a web page without reloading the page so for example what happens is uh, assume that you have this is simple example you have a two field or a two form controls one is to enter the username another one is to enter the password okay now when you enter the username okay the data will be sent to the so data will be sent to the a uh, server it will be sent to the server and what happens is after server gets the username it will uh, it will perform certain actions okay and then again it will reload the page it will reload the page and then you will be entering the password and after that you will be entering the password so here some fraction of seconds will be wasted for reloading the page okay so so for us it is a uh, less time but for a server when fetching the data from the server this 10 10 seconds or 10 milliseconds will matters a lot okay so develops a dream was to reduce this 10 seconds or 10 whatever it is 10 seconds okay so you have to reduce this 10 seconds okay that is the reloading time so you have to develop the web page such that there will be no reloading the page time will not be wasted for reloading the page so to uh, for that we will be using this ajax concepts that is asynchronous exchanging the data from the web server behind the scene 
so you will be giving the data username okay and you are storing it in the database so all those things will be happening at the back end so requesting the data from the server after the page has loaded receiving the data from the server from the page after it has been loaded sending the data to the server everything whatever it is happening everything is happening in the background so no time will be wasted for reloading the page so that is the concept of ajax so using ajax you can load the page without any reloading time okay wasting any reloading time so this is a normal flow okay uh, without the concept of ajax how the page will be loaded okay see here we are requesting a form so this is a form there are two fields one for country another one is for state so this is a check uh, radio button and this is a uh, drop down okay so you are requesting the page and after that the user will enter the canada okay he will enter the data so he will select canada and he will click on the update button so once he will select canada the that data will be sent to the server you can see here using the query string so this is called as a query string correct so name and value pair okay so that will be sent to the server and after that okay so after that you can see here so when data is sent to the server okay so it is wasting some few minutes of time okay and after that it is requesting the requested page with the updated form will be returned so this is the updated form so to get this updated form from the server we are wasting some time okay so that is the reloading time so after that he will be selecting the state so state he will be selecting and then user will continue with the form so here every time the, the data will be sent to the server and data will be uh, you are getting the updated form so some amount of time will be wasted for loading the data or loading the page so that is a normal flow without the concept of ajax okay. so if you are using ajax concept you can uh, reduce this reloading time okay so this reloading time is there right so everything will happen at the back end without the knowledge of user or the browser so this is all for today so if you have any doubt you can ask so i'll be uploading the paper okay test paper in uh, teams please uh, take the test okay Are you able to access the paper? It is already uploaded.